everyone, I'm Dimitri with Herbert Knox. Welcome to another installment of behind the scenes of how we shoot our videos. Behind me, I'm filming the Streetcom F12C computer case. It's a beautiful aluminum chassis. And uh, today's episode is all about lighting and what you can do with lighting and other lighting emitting objects to you make your scene, make your atmosphere a bit more pleasing, a bit more warm, uh, a bit more welcoming, if that's the type of look you're going for. So as usual, I am filming with five light sources. Now notice I have three lights. I have my orange light to add a bit of uh, edge light that is a different color temperature than my soft boxes that are daylight bulbs. One is shooting right into the uh, ceiling, but then I have this other light that shines directly on the object that I'm filming, which uh, adds that ed extra extra edge light from this side. So I have this blue light and this orange light from both sides creating this really cool warm atmosphere. My third light, sorry, my fourth light is the outside. Of course, I'm using ambient lighting here so that fills in the room as well. And my monitor. Don't underestimate of using creativity to add color and uh, atmosphere to your scene. For example, so this is the picture that I use because it has beautiful warm light uh, when it's out of focus. It creates this beautiful uh, type of uh, atmosphere. So you can see in the background of this particular shot without the monitor, it would just be completely black. And uh, I position the camera and the object so that I have a bit of extra ambience. You know, if there was nothing behind the object, it would be, it would be boring. These are the five elements that I definitely recommend having sort of an ambient light that is uh, delivered by the softbox by the outside light and the two extra lights uh, such as the simple IKEA lamp and uh, obviously a different softbox that shines directly off the object create a really unique looking scene that isn't uh, anything super special but it makes this shot a lot more interesting than if the monitor or any of the other lighting elements weren't there. And so here's a tip for how I usually film. I usually try to film in a linear format. What that means is I try to capture shots as they happen and not later going back to them because sometimes you can forget that unless you're taking notes and saying, okay, these are the shots that I still have to take. So me filming in a linear format means while I'm opening up the case, I would open it up, I would reposition the camera, I take another angle, I get all the micro shots while I do the procedure of actually going inside an object, for example, a chassis like this one. And this helps me to edit easier later on because when I do storyboarding inside Premiere, I know that everything is pretty much after another. Uh, all the shots are already pretty much aligned in form of how they should go. Obviously, I do b-roll and extra footage and extra things that I would fit in and fill in the gaps later but uh, if you do shoot in a linear format it helps a lot with the post-processing work and so I would definitely recommend trying at least uh, plan ahead and seeing the edit inside your head and how you uh, format everything and how you position everything that will make the job easier uh, post-processing and also while filming. Here's another tip for using lighting to your advantage. So right now I have my light turned off and uh, let the camera focus so you can see what exactly, uh, what type of shot I'm trying to capture. So here I'm trying to just show that this is the little uh, nut that uh, gets screwed on over here. Um, but it's a very cold shot and I'm trying to go for kind of a warm effect. So notice what happens when I turn my my side light on. So this is kind of shooting onto the side, not directly onto the object, but you can already tell there's some extra elements that have appeared inside the shot and I will overlay them inside the video so you can see. But we have this tiny bit out of focus elements uh, appeared in the, in the bottom that uh, create this really warm, uh, nice uh, effect where I notice what happens when I turn my, my side light off. So it's a very cold and very warm shot with these unique out of focus elements. 
All right, one of the critical tips that I can give you for setting up your shot in terms of lighting is exposure. Exposure is an extremely critical element in making sure that your uh, filming style is unique, it stands out, because I see so many YouTubers overexposed, as in the highlights are completely blown out, and um, usually on the edges of things that where the object is blown out, it makes it look you know a little bit not pro and so if you want your footage to stand out make sure to not overexpose uh, the highlights not blow them out uh, and instead use lighting in your advantage use different angles to make sure that for example if you have a window in one corner and that's completely blown out you can reposition the camera so that the window is not visible and therefore everything is exposed in your scene correctly so make sure to don't uh, overexpose for the highlights, uh, don't completely expose for the shadows because sometimes shadows don't have to be in full detail, you know, you can have completely black shadows, you can crush them later, but highlights are very difficult to correct for unless you're shooting raw, so highlights, don't overexpose, uh, and one tip I can give you, move on to the camera are zebras. If your camera supports zebras, make sure to enable them. In my case, I enabled the zebra to stay on for 90% of overexposed elements. So here, I can bring down my, my ISO, but as you can see, there's still some zebras going on, so I can bring up my aperture just a tiny bit so that I can still, so I don't get those overexposed elements around the object. Um, as otherwise that would not be fine as uh, color correcting for overexposed elements is very difficult. Now since this episode is mainly about lighting let me show you the settings that I use on my camera. Now if you want to find out more about my camera gear and my entire setup make sure to check out the previous video. So I'm shooting the GH4 but right now let's check out the settings. So I'm shooting at 1.8 majority of the time which gives me uh, the best looking bokeh, so out of the focus elements and the, the field without it being in too out of focus or too creamy. Sometimes I stop it down to all the way to 1.2 because of the speed booster or uh, actually sometimes I just shoot at 2.8 uh, my aperture. Um, and then my shutter speed is always at 1 over 80th, which means that anytime there's motion in the scene, so if I'm doing pans or anything like that, the, this is, allows me to make sure that everything in the shot remains sharp. So I keep it one, uh, 1 over 80th or 1 over 100th if the shot is stationary and if I need that extra stop of light if I don't want to change my aperture. And my ISO always remains at uh, one, uh, 200 ISO just because the GH4 is not that great in low light and me stopping it all the way to you know something higher. It basically never goes above 800 and that becomes really really noisy especially at 4K. So I keep it at 200 and I use my aperture and my shutter speed to adjust uh, based on a lighting scenario and because I have the lighting uh, in my studio I don't really need to pump the ISO higher unless I'm you know in a specific special environment or so but this is it aperture at f1.8 and shutter speed at 1 over 80th. One of the things about reviewing cases though is that I have a reference system that I put inside all cases that is uh, pretty much an identical system but that means I have to disassemble it from the previous case review. For this particular example, I have only one softbox firing off on this type of corner, not really directing uh, directly at the object, which is this case here, but uh, slightly off it so that I get this sort of edge light. And you can actually see it here, and it's a good representation of what the GH4 will finally show like. And I'll have the shots on screen so you can see what I'm talking about in terms of separating the object uh, that is lit up by a different type of source of light in terms of color 
temperature uh, and my ambient orange light that is positioned right be behind there. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes episode on lighting, a uh, little tips and tricks on how I, you know, in particular example of setting up lighting for this uh, object behind me. But these techniques apply to pretty much anything in terms of trying to separate your object from the background using multiple sources of light, using anything that is in your possession to help you achieve uh, a little bit different look so using your monitor for example uh, pulling up uh, some colorful image on there and when it's out of focus it looks beautiful having different uh, sources of light in terms of color temperature um, and obviously if you can't control the intensity of the light uh, and all of these elements that would add to you having the ability to control the entire scene to your liking perfectly but in, as in my case uh, as it turns out dark right now I was able to uh, populate the background with beautiful orange uh, warm lighting and then have having the soft box to give the object the edge light to sort of finish my shot and finish off with this review so if you enjoy this content please uh, leave a link uh, please leave a like down below uh, make sure to subscribe and follow and we'll see you in the next one